Mr. Chairman of International Transit Trans Transport Forum, their Transport Minister, their Wolfgang, thanks a lot for your hospitality in this beautiful time, in this beautiful building. We are very, very happy for this meeting. Many, many thanks. Now I'll speak in French, and the answer to, to, the, to Mr. Laud in English after. Moi, je pense que personne ne peut ignorer les liens directs entre la crise économique et les transports. No one can deny the direct connection that exists between the financial crisis and uh, traffic and transport. All operators are dealing with the same issues. Sometimes, of course, it uh, mainly hits freight. Uh, transport, um, prices that go up and uh, increased rates that are on the horizon, but no sector is really not impacted due to the crisis. Now, we see that growth, of course, means that you can very quickly, efficiently move goods from A to B. And uh, ever since the beginning of the crisis, I've been saying that investment has to happen in the area of transport. And structures are such that uh, we need to be able to respond to the crisis. France, it means almost 10% of jobs, really. But of course, this is, again, not enough. You have to also uh, anticipate what the capacity is. You have to look at the uh, competitiveness of Europe. We have to be more competitive. And we believe and assume that the sector of transport is already and will be even more so a key sector. And uh, so therefore, the European member countries want to, to make those right choices. Transport infrastructure will be improved. Many member countries have made the transport sector into the key sector. Now, uh, looking around, I, I was uh, very, very surprised uh, uh, to see that Mr. Atali is not here anymore. But uh, listening to him, um, I am more of an optimist, maybe, that he is. We don't always uh, agree, but last night we watched the uh, soccer game between Barcelona and Manchester United, and I think you win if you're willing to attack, if you're willing to try to win the game, win the match, and uh, if you want to try to make full results, otherwise, at the very last minute, you might lose. And so, therefore, I think you need to be focused, and we need to make those investments. And even for those infrastructure projects that are already in the pipeline or even now in construction. And remember, uh, then also we need infrastructure for the future. But immediately we have to start work. Of course, you also have to look at the debt situation. And I agree with Mr. Atali in many instances. And I don't believe that taxes should be raised. No, not at all. Citizens need to regain confidence. And we need to invest in, invest in infrastructure. That is a thing that is for certain. So that's the challenge. And it's not easy to overcome it. You need to commit. You need to struggle. You need to take on the responsibility. The commissioners, the ministers on the European level need to stand and say, citizens, we are with you. We are not way up somewhere in these palaces and castles. No, we are standing next to you. We are here to solve the problems. And in this very difficult situation, we want to be steadfast and overcome this. Of course, yes, it is a global crisis. So we shouldn't act in a protectionist manner. We shouldn't create a fortress around us. The European transport system needs to move 
with the same amount of quality and standards from all countries making up the EU. And uh, in this crisis, of course, I agree with the other ministers that uh, there's also an opportunity. I think you're aware that in uh, China there is a proverb uh, or a, a word, basically, that uh, is uh, one um, one uh, icon that means chance and crisis, opportunity and crisis, uh, the same pictogram. And uh, so uh, coordinated strategy uh, on the operational financial level and on the political level needs to be coordinated so that we can face those challenges and own them. A coordinated strategy, however, can't simply stop at the borders of the European Union. We should look beyond that. We should cover also the Mediterranean countries beyond the EU and also the countries on our eastern border of the EU. And I'm very, very pleased to see that also the Russian Minister of Transport is here. I think we need to carry on that dialogue with uh, Russia, the Russian Federation. And of course, we have to realize what the problems are, but uh, we do have the political will and to try to solve those problems. We're dealing with a global crisis. It's not only a European crisis. And we are aware that the outer boundaries of Europe are simply not a boundary, uh, but it's something that needs to be overcome. I support your position about aviation. Today, we will have a meeting with you about aviation. I will work with you for a good agreement about Open Sky and about this transport system is very, very important, not only for Europe, not only for USA, for other world. Many, many thanks for your position. I underline your good position. I will work, I think, very well with you. But I should like to underscore how important Europe, how important Russia is, and what role it has to play and can play on the African continent. We can talk about economic development, we can talk about growth, we can talk about transport, if we simply leave out Africa. And so for this reason, in the middle of the next month, month of June, with my colleagues at the Commission, I will be submitting a paper, a document, which shows that we have to make that connection between the European and trans-European network and the trans-African networks. We need to strengthen that, because without Africa, we are not going to be able to solve our problems. Political stability of Africa is paramount for Europeans. Without political stability in Africa, without economic development in Africa, and of course this means further development of infrastructure on that continent, without that, our major problems of immigration, for example, cannot be solved. And so therefore we have to commit, we have to help to build the infrastructure system, and we can then also solve the problems that Africa has. Also, as far as security and safety is concerned, um, security of goods and freight traffic and passenger traffic, very important. Look at Somalia. What is happening uh, along the coast, ocean. Uh, of course, we have ships from the United States, from Europe, from uh, Russia. Everybody tries to protect their own passengers on those ships in those waters, but that is not enough. It simply is not enough. You also have to ask the political question and find solutions for Somalia if extremists are going to win, then 
it will become increasingly difficult, not only for freight traffic, but all kinds of traffic in all of those countries. And so, therefore, I am stressing that we need a political commitment on the part of Russia, the United States, and Europe in Africa. And so that is why I wanted to mention this here today while you're here. And in this connection, let me also say that it's important to start up again a new Africa policy. $48 million are expended for infrastructure. And it's very spectacular, uh, a lot more than we're doing here in our European Union. But uh, let's evaluate also what is happening in Europe, what we have been able to mobilize in our European budget common budget, and also look at uh, what uh, is available on the member state level. So uh, we have stability pacts uh, in the different member countries in order to confront the immediate crisis. We are trying to be a catalyst for investments. We want to help the financial markets. We want to help the enterprises, the companies. And the European Investment Bank needs liquidity, needs capital, and investments are then to be made in order uh, to uh, curb climate change, also energy uh, savings need to be promoted. And we want the private sector um, to um, get involved. I could uh, quote here under uh, number three here, uh, we have the um, public-private partnerships. We talked about all different kinds of uh, models, and the private sector is getting active, and I'm glad uh, that the uh, minister, as well as our president Barroso mentioned that private sector very important to come on board here. And when you want to set up good infrastructure product, then uh, the private sector has to get involved. But it's the politicians who have to set the framework. We have to be able to give some guarantees. And we also have to appeal to the private sector to come on board. OK, so we are beset with a financial and economic crisis, which is affecting business. And that is why we also need to appeal to the business community. 500 million euros for 2009 is what has been set aside for projects which will be implemented in the very short future. Uh, up to uh, four or five billion euros is what the total will be. And then for the upcoming year and budget, we have a total sum of two billion euros that have been set aside for that purpose. So I would wish that uh, we could could have more funds available then in the individual member countries so that we have uh, additional funds available for infrastructure in, in Europe. So we're trying to um, take a broad approach here. But I said, I said at the beginning, I'm not totally in sync with what uh, Mr. Attali said in the beginning. Uh, there are certain ideas that I go, go conform with, but he said that one should not only invest, uh, also in not only in old uh, infrastructure, but also develop new ideas for new infrastructure. A couple of years ago, we talked about uh, the uh, trans-European networks, and therefore the Commission and also the Council of Ministers under the presidency of uh, the French government, and it was a meeting in mid-September in Naples at the time. We met, we talked about the trans-European network, and we uh, debated how these networks, this network could be uh, expanded, strengthened, and how the market would become stronger, but that we should also open the gates uh, for the countries 
east and south of Europe, and maybe even uh, also re or pick up again and make stronger the connections to the United States of America. So it's a good idea uh, to project this into the future. So, therefore, uh, we also invited ministers from uh, the Mediterranean countries. Uh, we uh, wanted to really think about the long haul. And uh, I am convinced that transport networks are an excellent vehicle for economic development. I'm from Rome. That's where I come from, and uh, we knew uh, that the development of the Roman Empire had to do with infrastructure. Also, the United States began its uh, steep incline with railroads, and uh, infrastructure is what uh, was important. So let's not forget that. Never forget the lessons that history has taught us. And so, therefore, I can say that Europe and its neighbors and its friends uh, is going to sit down and think about what is good for the future, what is good for transport. We will build a good transport system in order to take up this challenge that uh, besets us at the moment. And I think the financial economic crisis is that challenge. We hope it will not turn into a social crisis. And so therefore, we need to struggle together with Africans, Russians, with Americans, women, men from Asia and Africa. It's a global challenge. It's a global solution that we need. And if we work together against protectionism, then it will reach all the way down to Australia. And I think every citizen will thank us for that endeavor that we have been willing to take up the responsibility and challenge. Thank you very much.